Good morning and welcome to News on ITN with me, Bhakti Abe Surya. To begin with, let's take a look at the stories making headlines this morning. Foreign Secretary Ravinath Arya Singh briefs the HCR Ambassador on the Geneva Resolution. Extension from Matara to Hambantota of the Southern Expressway opens today. The government on alert over Sri Lankans in South Korea following COVID-19 concerns. Over 228,000 persons have been affected by dry weather. In news from overseas, Joe Biden looks to revive campaign in more ethnically diverse Nevada. And now for the news in detail. First up in local news, Secretary to the Foreign Ministry Ravinath Arya Singha has met the President of the Human Rights Commission, Ambassador Elizabeth Tichy Fisselberger. Secretary to the Foreign Ministry Ravinath Arya Singha briefed on the decision by the government to withdraw its co sponsorship of Resolution 40 1 of March 2019 on promoting reconciliation, accountability, and human rights in Sri Lanka, which also incorporates and builds on preceding Resolution 30 1 of October 2015 and 34 1 of March 2017. The meeting came ahead of the upcoming 43rd session of the Human Rights Council scheduled to commence on Monday. He also informed her that Minister Gunavodana will lead the Sri Lanka delegation to the 43rd session of the Human Rights Council. Extension from Matara to Hambantota of the Southern Expressway opens today. President Gotabe Rajapaksha and Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha will be present at the opening today at the Palatua Interchange at 3 p.m. The project has already cost 1.68 billion rupees. The toll for light vehicles from Katunayaka to Hampantota is 1,000 rupees. Accordingly, Colombo and Barawa Kumbuka in the deep south will be connected, which is already linked to the Hampantota port and the Matalaya port by one and a half hours. The Ministry of Foreign Relations, in coordination with the Sri Lanka Embassy in Seoul, has been closely monitoring and coordinating efforts to ensure the safety of Sri Lankans residing in South Korea. The action was taken following the recent rise of COVID-19 cases, particularly in the city of Daegu. According to the Sri Lanka Embassy in Seoul, at present, the Sri Lankans, no Sri Lankans have fallen victims to the virus. Over 20,000 Sri Lankans reside in South Korea. The embassy is focusing particular attention on Sri Lankans in Daegu, where an estimated 915 reside there. 228,469 persons have been affected by the prevailing dry weather. Therefore, the government requests the public to use water and electricity sparingly. According to the Disaster Management Center, these persons belong to 54,329 families. Measures have been taken to provide drinking water and other essential facilities through district secretariats continuously. Meanwhile, Water Supply and Drainage Board says maintaining 24 hours water supply is a difficult task. Hydropower generation has also decreased due to water levels of main reservoirs having receded. Minister Bimal Virawansha has completed a 20-year service as a parliamentarian. A ceremony to mark the event was held at the Lotus Pond Theatre in Colombo yesterday. President Gotabe Rajapaksha and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha graced the occasion as chief guests. Addressing the gathering, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha recalled the challenges he faced with Minister Vimal Veeravansha in eliminating terrorism, development and safeguarding the country's dignity. Minister Veeravansha said Gotabe Rajapaksha became the president in Sri Lanka at a decisive juncture. A person who has attempted to take ransom from parliamentarian Ishak Rahuman has been taken into custody. The suspect named Risha Maharouf has asked a sum of 10 million rupees to prevent spreading false rumours through social media against the parliamentarian. He was arrested while taking an advance of 500,000 rupees from the total amount of this ransom. Anuradha Pura Police are produced, the Supreme Court before, produced him before the Supreme Court. 
Finally, in local news, the Sri Lanka Youth Parliament 2020 election was held yesterday. This was to elect 332 youth parliamentarians at divisional secretariat level. Votes were cast under electronic system for the first time. Police Special Task Force raided a large-scale illegal distillery at Depanama in Pannipitiya. This has been conducted at a house taken on rental basis. Two suspects were taken into custody. A person who has sold narcotic pills to schoolgoers in Kalutara area was taken into police custody. Kalutara Police Crimes Division officials took him into custody at Kalutara North area with about 3,000 pills and 3 grams of heroin in his possession. With that, we wrap up our today's edition of ITA News. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now and have a pleasant day.